let me ask you something. If you were to pick the greatest movie teachers of all time, by that I mean film characters who are teachers, who would make your list? I mean, suppose you're creating a greatest movie teacher playoff bracket. Who would make a spot on that bracket? Now, a lot of people would go for Robin Williams and Dead Poets Society. I'm sure a lot of fans for Mr. Holland or Coach Carter or Edward James Olmos and Stand and Deliver. Plus, there's some dark horses. I make a strong argument for Mr. Hand from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. But for my money, there is one teacher that takes all the other teachers to school. The one individual who leaves Thunderdome victorious, if I can mix my movie metaphors. That teacher, Mr. Miyagi from The Karate Kid. Wax on, wax off. Think about it. Mr. Miyagi teaches Ralph Macchio karate without Ralph Macchio knowing he's being taught karate. And he does all of Mr. Miyagi's housework in the process. That, friends, is a productive, high-impact learning scenario with symmetric, mutually beneficial outcomes for both parties, and no formal learning is involved. And according to our guest on today's pod, that's more or less how companies are going to need to operate in the future. His name is Robert Pearson. He is a human performance consultant, former executive director of the Institute for Performance and Learning. He's worked all over the world with private and public sector clients. He's published tons of articles and has a PhD in instructional design development from Syracuse University. And most importantly, he also happens to be our learning specialist here at Nexus. Rob spent decades creating learning solutions for clients and can tell you that the reports on the future of work are true. In this decade alone, technology is going to make entire categories of jobs obsolete. And in their place will emerge new jobs, ones for which formal learning has yet to be conceived. If you ask Rob, companies who want to stay competitive will need to essentially Miyagi their workforces going beyond conventional training courses and instead creating whole learning environments, ones that mesh seamlessly with their core functions. It's a brave new world, one that Pat Morita would be proud of, and Rob is going to tell us about it today at The Nexus. The Nexus, a place where people converge and connect. On this podcast, we look at the things that are changing the way all of us do our jobs. We're going to take a quick peek into the minds of those people who are helping us change. Scientists, HR leaders, and experts in human performance. I'm Chris Nelson. Rob, thank you, first of all. Thanks for inviting me to chat with you today. You say you do? Yes. Yes. Do you have anything to say on the subject? Uh, oh? <laughs> What's your name? Colette. And who are you to me? And how do you feel about how much mommy and daddy work when they're at home? I don't really know. You have no... I think the main driver of this is technology. Technology essentially is turning the labor market on its head. It's eliminating whole categories of jobs. And at the same time, it's creating new ones. We're talking about displacements here in the millions of jobs. When we think about these new jobs that are being created, they all share something in common. They'll demand workers that can seamlessly pivot from project to project, not just every few months, but maybe every few weeks. The ability to have new colleagues, have new bosses, have new goals. In a sense, we're all going to be gig workers. This is transformational for the way businesses work. So a huge priority for businesses today is how to future skill employees. I think you work fine. Highly tuned soft skills. The ability to listen, the ability to collaborate and co-create, thrive on ambiguity, to leverage data, develop insights and recommendations. And unfortunately, these aren't skills you learn at college. We used to talk about knowledge workers. And I think increasingly organizations are talking about the need to have everybody be a learning worker. It's interesting that, you know, we're talking about learning and many may assume that you're talking about picking up some hard technical skills. But really what you're describing is just the ability to 
team well, to move into a situation and be like a Navy SEAL, like interpret intel quickly and adapt to the circumstance. Absolutely. And it's a wonderful metaphor. When you think about what a gig worker is, effective gig workers thrive in that kind of environment. It places huge accountability on the individual worker you know, to drive their own success. It places a huge accountability on managers and leaders to create an environment where that kind of work style thrives. You know, the old command and control approach in business is just not going to work anymore. And frankly, the new generation of workers, the next generation of workers, Gen Zs, Gen Cs, C for COVID workers, they want to go to organizations where they can develop and, and grow as individuals, where they can grow in their craft and, and, and enhance their skills. The most important thing for this generation of workers and organizations that are able to adapt will win the war on talent. Do most companies feel the same way? Do they see it as their obligation or responsibility? It's mission critical. It's not an option. It's not a nice to have anymore. Organizations that fail to adapt, they, they do so at, at their own peril. Organizations will fail to attract and, and retain top talent. They'll fail to move at the speed of business today. They won't be able to innovate, bring new ideas, new products to market fast enough. The competition will outpace them. They'll fail to realize improvements in process and workflow that will cut costs. I mean, this shift and, and enabling future skilling workers is, is really at the core of high performance. For those organizations that are struggling to figure out how to get there, what would you recommend that they do? Is it a, a strategic shift? Is it a cultural shift? It's imperative, I think, for enterprise learning to really shift their focus from being a service provider to being a problem solver. That's a cultural shift and that's a strategic shift as well. All good things flow from that because enterprise learning then becomes an equal partner in the business. It's at the big table when big strategic decisions are made. Learning ceases to become an afterthought it becomes something that's top of mind for organizations as a key enabler to drive the kinds of changes that we've been talking about. We talk about learning and development. Another place where enterprise learning can, can focus and begin to make a difference and move the needle on change is working out loud. The idea of portfolios and portfolio assessments, challenging workers to curate a set of tangible artifacts, things that they produced, that demonstrate proficiency and innovation. And then finally, it's really making learning more engaging, making learning fun. And how can we do that through things like storytelling, game playing, co-creation of learning, and leveraging new media in thoughtful ways. We've started to do some very cool work around using podcasts as a learning delivery medium. Those are a few ideas that I would throw out that uh, might be places for enterprise learning leaders to put some thought and effort. How important is it for people to stop thinking of learning and working as two discrete functions, as mutually exclusive, and to start seeing them as something that's blended together? Yeah, it's critical, and, and really it's the essence of the transformation that we've been talking about. I think every leader, every manager needs to be thinking about employee development and personal learning day in and day out, building opportunities for that, building opportunities to reflect on performance and continuous improvement all the time. High-performing organizations do that really well. You begin to hardwire that into an organization just by consciously thinking about it every day. You know, the other thing I was thinking about as you were mentioning it too is the role of self-directed learning in all of this. I think a lot of people just simply show up, choose from a menu. How important is it that people are able to sort of like choose their own learning journey, choose their own adventure as it were? Well, we know from science that it's, it's critical. It's not only motivational, but individual workers, learners, they're in the best position to determine what they need to learn next. And so empowering learners to be able to access materials, access content, access conversations, 
to curate their own learning journey is a core fundamental design requirement for this kind of learning environment. And we, we know that from our own personal experiences. We hate to be told what to do. We hate to be told what to learn. Uh, let our curiosity drive it. Companies need to stop thinking of their employees as only employees, but people who are learners, people who are evolving with the organization. The transformation that, that we're in the midst of, the disruptions that we're trying to adjust to, they are fundamentally redefining the relationship between business and worker and in the powerful ways that you've just described. I love your optimism, Rob. That's good. <laughs> You're almost talking about, you know, converting learning within a business into the uh, enterprise equivalent of Mr. Miyagi teaching their employee populations how to wax on and wax off, right? I think that's an intriguing metaphor. That is a really diplomatic way to say that, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Do your teams need reskilling, upskilling, or mindset change on a massive scale? Are you facing a learning future that's even scarier than John Kreese and the karate team from Cobra Kai Dojo? Then let Rob and the rest of the folks at Nexus help. For over two decades, we've been developing and implementing learning strategies and programs that prepare workers for their future. You can find us at www.nexuscommunications.com. That's N-E-X-U-S communications.com. And if you like what you heard today, share our pod with a friend. Or even better, rate or download us at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you happen to feed your podcast Jones. The Nexus is produced by Alex Paveo with editing and sound design by Justin Moy. I'm Chris Nelson. Thank you for listening.